I was I heard Paul Bettany an interview with Paul Bettany one time and he said talking about acting is like talking about sex like you don't talking about it is just so awkward and weird like you just kind of have to do it Welcome to the How I Met Your Mother podcast for the episode entitled Ducky Tie. This is the third episode of the seventh season and the 139th episode of the series. My name is Alec Lev, and we're coming to you from the offices of How I Met Your Mother here at 20th Century Fox Studios in Los Angeles, California. You can follow us on Twitter at Himium Podcast, where we will announce upcoming guests and where you can submit your questions and comments. The voice you heard at the top of the show was Ashley Williams, who returns this week as Victoria. Ashley Williams, thank you for joining us today. Sure. Let's start at the beginning. Uh, when did acting come into your life? We grew up uh, in basically like right in Yonkers, and uh, we had a next door neighbor who was a soap opera actress. And at the time, my mom was uh, not working, and my dad was a freelance journalist. So we were really making the big bucks with three kids in the family. And, you know, I think it, the idea was sort of pitched to my mom as a money-making scheme in a lot of ways um, that could end up maybe being fun if we were lucky. So um, my sister got headshots taken and started booking commercials. And then once she started booking commercials, my mom was like, all right, you guys got to go too. Um, because our lives kind of changed, you know, we had more money and um, so I guess it came into my life as a money-making scheme, which uh, it is no longer, but <laughs> <laughs> I think that's sort of taken its path, yeah. Was there a change at some point where you decided, you know, you enjoy it? I think I enjoyed it right away. Um, it, it's hard at a young age to not enjoy a scenario under which you are the center of attention and people think you're hilarious even when you do nothing. Um, so, you know, I mean, was I outgoing? I guess, but when people were laughing and looking at me, I was definitely outgoing, and the answer was always, I love this, you know? Um, Do you remember what your first paying gig was? Yeah, it was, um, (laughs) it was a print job, um, where, for a textbook, like a math textbook, where I was literally in white overalls painting the letter P in blue paint on like a big, you know, block. That what wasn't on your IMDb page. I couldn't find no? it. No, I didn't see that. You know what? I got to call someone about that because I feel like that was some of my best work. You went to uh, Boston University? I did. Their theater program? Their theater conservatory, yep. What kind of training was that? It was um, pretty standard, um, you know, School for the Arts training, conservatory training. So it was 8, you know, 8.30 in the morning until basically 11.30 at night, all day long. We did, there was no opportunity to go run around Boston and drink and have fun. It was, um, it was pretty, uh, pretty intense, which I thought I wanted (laughs) when I first set out to do it. Um... And then I was, like, immediately annoyed and, you know, it was all, you know, so I was just flexing one muscle and, you know, and after a while I sort of gave in to the schedule and the exhaustion and um, and that, I feel like that's when I really fell in love with, with acting was probably my sophomore year of college. Are techniques that you learn there or were taught there things that you still find yourself using? Yeah, um, definitely. Things that I'm probably not really aware of. Um, I think, you know, the crazy thing about BU is you can spot a BU actor from far away because they really, um, BU actors take their time and are very open and present. And we don't speak with, you know, um, like a theatrical voice like I've seen a lot of like Juilliard actors have that and I've always been really envious because I just talk like a normal person oddly enough I talk like I'm from the Midwest or something but (laughs) I'm not I'm from New York um but yeah BU actors you know are always on time and um are, are are really like team players 
and uh, we're reliable actors. <laughs> so, uh, so I think all of those qualities serve me really well today. Um, and then once I got out here, I started studying with somebody, and those techniques I use actively on a daily basis. Um, and, I, and I'm aware of it, <laughs> purposely. Uh, you were on As the World Turns for a while. Oh, yes. Did you learn something from that? Well, you understand, when I was on As the World Turns, I was 16. And the only acting that I had done so far had been like in musicals or even worse, musical reviews, you know, where basically I'd come out in like a funny costume and people thought it was hilarious. And uh, I was very, very good at it and very serious. And then, um, you know, when I got Out of the World Turns, it, it, there, was, there was really no technique to speak of from my end. Um, I was trying to memorize my lines and not mess up as much as possible. I, th I feel like it was more, you know, As the World Turns was more of like a gymnasium for me, even seeing if I could exist, you know, without breaking my arm. Um, and a lot of the time, you know, I failed miserably. And in that sense, it was an amazing playground to fall on my face and have people still watch and still want me to, you know, come back and do something else that was dramatic and see me cry and you know so um I think it really like freed up my um my instincts really so I sort of and I, the other amazing thing about that job is that I was surrounded by these you know Juilliard actors who had been in the first few you know graduate graduating class at Juilliard um a hundred thousand years ago and they were all doing plays and working on As the World Turns during the day and that was an amazing amazing influence here were these you know sane stable family oriented actors who are making a living and having a blast at the same time and what I loved about soap acting was that you could show up on any given day and decide to make you're seeing something amazing and really commit to it and really work on it or you know for me like if I had homework or if I you know I would sort of like show up and say my lines and you know kind of bail emotionally <laughs> and it didn't it didn't seem to bug anybody and that um I it just allowed me to sort of breathe you know acting it always sort of seemed like this thing that people on Broadway did or in movies movies are such a big deal especially you know, I was 12 and my sister got a huge part in Father the Bride. And so I was like, well, I could never do that. But As the World Turns allowed for me to, you know, be a little bit more loosey-goosey about the whole thing, which has helped me a lot. Do you know, by the way, how many uh, roles IMDb has you having played on television? Oh my gosh, I don't even want to think about it. Uh, it's 38. Okay. <laughs> uh, eight alone in tw t this year. <laughs> not not including how I met your mother. <laughs> and by the way, you got married this year too. Yeah. Did you get married on camera? When was, <laughs> at what t when did you have time to do? I, I mentioned that. earlier that I am what they call a reliable hire, yeah. which means I get a lot of calls at ten thirty at night saying we need you on set tomorrow morning at five thirty a.m., which is some of the most fun ever. So consequently, I have a shit ton of credits and nobody knows who I am and I'm a little bit broke but not so bad you know and uh, I've sort of kept this funny ball up in the air which is my hilarious career. What is your way of what What do you do when you get a new script for a show that okay maybe you have to do it tomorrow maybe you have a little week longer to prepare maybe you know it's only gonna be this one quick thing what do you do? It's so funny that you ask because I was I heard Paul Bettany an interview with Paul Bettany one time and he said talking about acting is like talking about sex. Like you don't talking about it is just so awkward and weird. Like you just kind of have to do it, you know? <laughs> that being said, when I get an audition cuz you understand like I'm not in a position where people send me scripts and say, "Hey, but when I get an audition, I um, basically am just trying to get the job. <laughs> so that's my goal. Um, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to memorize the lines really fast 
so that when I get into the room, I don't have to think about the words and I can make it sort of my own. And honestly, like that is my day to day practice here in our weird city. Uh, upon getting the job, it's different. Um, once, <laughs> you know, it's funny, once I get a job, I think I go through this period where of mourning, where I like, I'm like, it's almost like the Woody Allen, like, I don't really want to be a part of a club that wants, like, <laughs> like, I'm like, wait, they bought that? I can't believe those guys fell for that. Like, I was just kind of dicking around. Like, I don't really know how to play this part. And I can't believe I have to do this on TV. And, oh, you know, and I go through this sort of nauseating, you know, three days where I just feel like this is going to be the end of everything. Um, Hollywood is quite glamorous. Isn't it the best? <laughs> it's the best. Um, what was the question? <laughs> I have no clue. You get a script. It's in your hand. Yes, yes, you, yes, yes. yes. I, know, you, I know I'm playing the part. You know you're playing the part, oh. and now you actually feel like I'm a trained actor. I can do something okay. with this. What do you do? So the first thing I do is I read the script through probably once or twice, probably twice, and I r write down everything that I can glean from the script about the character, all of the facts. And then I build a timeline, starting from the character's first memory, um, leading all the way up to the moment before the first scene that I'm going to shoot, not the first scene of the movie or of the TV show or whatever. Um, and this, by the way, is not what I would do for a comedy. This is totally what I would do for like a movie of the week, of which I have done many. Um, and, you know, and then I go through this list of, you know, events in this character's life and I m write little stories. So, um, you know, let's say if the character's, you know, first memory is, you know, being in her childhood bedroom and her dad coming in and saying goodnight to her, I write that story out and then I sort of close my eyes and like dream it. Like, okay, I'm lying in my bed and my dad comes in and he's got, you know, um, like kind of like hairy arms, but it feels good and it's the air conditioning's on really high and it's dark, but I have a nightlight and this is what the nightlight looks like. And, you know, and I see him and I feel really safe. End of memory. And then I move on um, to the next memory in the timeline. Um, and in that sense, I create an entire life of a character that's not me so that when I can do, so that I can do emotional scenes and not feel like they have anything to do with Ashley. And, um, that's been sort of my pledge since I decided to be an actor was, I want to be um, a really great mom and a really sane wife, but I want to be an actor. So the only way that I can really do that is by separating myself from the characters that I play. By the way, this is not my idea. This is um, Warner Laughlin is my acting coach, and I've been working with her for almost 10 years. Um, and she taught me this technique, and I use it daily. Victoria. Let's talk about her. Well, see, what's funny is it, Victoria is, uh, it's for a comedy. So I, I didn't do any of that stuff because, you know, especially like sick multi-camera is like very face value. And if you start reading into it, um, I made the mistake. I was on a show called Good Morning Miami years and years ago, and I made the mistake of getting really deeply implanted into the emotional life of that character. And it took all of the comedy out of it. And it became this very serious, um, you know, sad woman, <laughs> which <laughs> which really isn't funny. If it's if if it's a sad woman who's optimistic, you know, and you can kind of flip it and kind of take some great writing and take the punctuation literally and you know keep it light then it's hilarious but I was not doing that I was playing it like a drama because I didn't understand anything <laughs> so then if if you are kind of more taking it right off the page which is actually what a lot of the show's actors have have talked about with me of just we're just getting this stuff and you know we, we trust the writing we trust the directing neil patrick harris talked a lot about trusting the editing that i'm going to give the editor a lot of different choices and then i, I know they're going to put this together mm. the way they need to because that's the way you work i suppose the answer to 
was it easy to come back to her after so long? Is... You know, it's funny. I I read the script for for this past episode and immediately was relieved because it was exactly the same. I mean, the, the writing on the show is so amazing and it's unfortunate that, you know, I, I audition so much and I get a lots and lots and lots of guys. You know, I've done something like eight pilots or something and I've worked with some great material, but once a, a writing, a group of writers gets together and they start to understand each other's voices and understand the characters' voices, it's there's just an ease that goes with all of the dialogue that just lets everybody kind of go, oh, phew, you know? And I immediately felt that with the script for, for this episode and was so relieved. Um, so no, there was no, there was zero preparation. I, you know, I read a bunch of synopsis of um, some of the episodes that I missed and sort of caught up on like what exactly has been, you know, going on. And then I, no, showed up. I'm sorry, you missed some of the episodes? No, I don't know. I don't know who just said that. (laughs) Who said that? (laughs) I wish I watched TV more, but I don't. But you're too busy making it. Well. Well. Um, I want to ask you about a particular moment in this last episode. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, The second episode of the series where we first see you in that moment where you and Ted, Victoria and Ted, see each other. Um, The shot is basically you setting this table then the camera notices you noticing Ted. Um, I think the viewer can kind of read a lot in this look, right? Is she surprised that it's him, sad of what happened? I mean, no matter, the more you know about the story, the more you could read into what your face is telling us. It's a very um, odd cinematic challenge to be told. You know the director, the writers need that look, but the character isn't thinking that. The character is just seeing Ted and doing what she's doing. Is your head in a, in, in a, in a certain place in that moment of going outside knowing, I got to give him a look. I got to give, <laughs> give him some Clint Eastwood here versus just Victoria's doing her thing. Um, what a fascinating question. Um, you know, when we shot that look, you know, the big look. Um, what's funny is the, the director wanted me to notice him at a specific moment in terms of what kind of shot he was doing, and I didn't know what the shot was, but he said, I'm gonna give you a cue for when you see him. So, really, what was going through my mind at that moment was, I was trying to rearrange these cupcakes in a way that made it made sense for me to be touching the cupcakes. So, I mean, you know, rearranging the cupcakes, I didn't want to just be touching them in order to look like I was doing an action. So I was trying to like get this pattern going of like white chocolate, white chocolate, white chocolate. And then he was like, and Ashley, which basically meant that I had to go try to find Josh in the crowd. And then, so I looked up and then once I saw him, um, I remember <laughs> I did it one time and I just looked at him and smiled like as if I was seeing Josh at a party and just like, oh, there he is, because he just yelled out my name and I, you know, was kind of caught off guard and I was like, oh, there's a friendly face, you know, and then the director came out and he was like, we need to actually keep it a little bit more up in the air about like how you feel about him. So so in that moment I realized that I actually had to do a little bit more thinking about it other than just being the face that saw this dude in a room, you know? So once again, go back to the white, you know, vanilla chocolate, vanilla chocolate, vanilla chocolate action. I mean, and then I suddenly like look up at him and then, yeah, I I had to make sure I had a, a little inner dialogue going in my head. So I was like, oh, there he is. Oh, I'm not sure if I like him. Oh, but he's so cute. Oh, look at those eyes. But don't get hurt again. You know, it was sort of like, if you have a little, I had to have like a little dialogue going in my head. Because if you just sort of look, it could be like this empty, vacuous, horrendous moment. You know, whereas like, but I have to say like at the same time, what's always going on underneath is like, oh God, I hope my hair is not (laughs) doing that thing it was doing earlier in the mirror. Uh, I do work for the show. I have no idea whatsoever who the mother is, what plans are for the mother. No one here knows anything except Craig and Carter. And we don't even know what it is that they know if they know anything. Mm -hmm. So nothing, you're not, no one's about to hear anything here. Um, However, you know that you did want our Twitter fan poll for whom the fans would most like to see as the mother. That's so nice! 
You even beat out Robin, 128 That's crazy, to 117. Because I would have voted for Robin. <laughs> uh, can you be the one? I mean, dude, anything's possible. It would be great for my career. <laughs> <laughs> it would definitely give me some press, and that would be awesome. Um, spin off. Spin off time. <laughs> I smell a spin off. Ashley Williams, thank you for joining us on the podcast. It's gr- it was great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for joining us for this week's podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Himium Podcast, where we will announce upcoming guests and where you can submit your thoughts and questions. Remember to watch How I Met Your Mother CBS Monday nights and every day in syndication. Check your local listings. Become a friend of the show on Facebook and check out cbs.com to learn more about the show and watch exclusive clips. Follow the show on Twitter at Himium underscore CBS. Sneak into the writer's room at Himium underscore writers. Get tweets straight out of the production office at Himium Prod and commune with Barney at Bro's Life. Our sound engineer is Jesse Olsen Milkman. My name is Alec Lev, and thanks for listening.